Today is a beautiful day simply because God made it. Amen? So breathe in and breathe out. Today is going to be a blessed day. Breathing in and out makes you feel relaxed, especially after a very tiring and stressful day, isn't it? And today I will be talking to you about prayer. Allow me to start with a prayer. Lord, thank you very much for this wonderful day. We pray, Lord, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can absorb whatever words coming from you and uh, we are going to apply it in our daily lives. Forgive us, Lord, from our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was a man who was deeply ill. And so the man's daughter went to ask a local pastor to come and pray with her father. When the pastor arrived, he found the man lying in a bed with his head propped up with two, uh, with two pillows and an empty chair beside his bed. The pastor assumed that the old fellow had been informed of his visit. I guess you were expecting me, he said. No. Who are you? I'm the new associate at your local church, the pastor replied. When I saw the empty chair and I figured out, I knew I was going to show up. Oh yeah, the chair said the bedridden man. Would you mind closing the door? Puzzled, the pastor shut the door. Then the man started speaking. I've never told anyone this, not even my daughter. But all my life, I have never known how to pray. At church, I used to hear the pastor talk about prayer, but it always went right over my head. I abandoned any attempt at prayer. Until one day, about four years ago, my best friend said to me, Joe, prayer is just a simple matter of having a conversation with Jesus. Here's what I suggest. Sit down on a chair Place an empty chair in front of you and in faith, in faith, see Jesus in the chair. It's not spooky because he promised, I'll be with you always. Then just to speak to him and listen in the same way you're doing with me right now. So I tried it and I've liked it so much that I do it a couple of hours every day. I'm careful though, if my daughter saw me talking to an empty chair, she'd either have a nervous breakdown or send me off to the mental hospital. The pastor was deeply moved by the story and encouraged the old guy to continue on to the journey, to his journey. Then he prayed with him and returned to the church. Two nights later, the daughter called and told the pastor that her dad had died that afternoon. The pastor asked, did he seem to die in peace? Yes, when I left the house around two o'clock, he called me over to his bed, told me one of his corny jokes, and kissed me on a cheek. When I got back from the store an hour later, I found him dead. But there's one thing, something strange. In fact, beyond strange, it's weird. Apparently, just before daddy died, he leaned over and rested his head on a chair beside the bed. That's the power of prayer. It changes the life of a person.
And so today I will be speaking to you about the power of prayer in our lives. And just to be honest with you, I myself, I am not going to talk to you about prayer as an expert in prayer. But just like a beggar telling other beggars where the bread is, we all need to pray. And today we will learn three out of many benefits of why we need to pray. One, prayer is a way of life. Everywhere we go these days, you can see warnings, warning signs. Like in big buildings, there is uh, in, in hospitals, in schools, and in, even in commercial establishments, you will see warnings and even you will see a fire extinguisher and a hose reel in every floors to prevent fire. You will also see a small alarm covered by a glass and it says there, break glass in case of emergency. And we are surrounded with different kinds of warnings in the road, in the malls, and even in parking lots. Have you noticed that? And many people treat prayer that way. In the event of emergency, in the event of emergency, just like fire, emergency landings, trials, problems, disasters, catastrophes, that's the time we will break the glass for emergency. But we have to understand that it is not only the, in the event of emergency that we have to pray. It should be a way of life for Christians. Most of my illustrations are coming from carpentry tools. That is why I have these materials over here. My first illustration is about the nails. Carpenters cannot go to work without nails. They have to work it with them. They have to carry it with them everywhere they go. It's part of their tools. It's part of their profession. It's part of their life. And in Christians, we have to understand that like nails, we carry prayers everywhere we go. It should be part of our life. Everywhere we go, we have to carry it with us. That's one of our priority to have as a Christian. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in everything that we do, we have to pray. Number two, prayer is our communication with the Lord, the Almighty God. And the good thing with constant communication is that we become closer to Him. You know, God wants to have a relationship with us. And prayer is the best tool for us to commune with Him, to have a good relationship with Him. Prayer also prevents us from relying on our own strength and allows us to depend on the power of the one true God. As we keep in touch with Him, the power, we depend on the power of the one true God. We pray because we know that someone is far greater than us, that someone is there for us, and that someone is God. It builds our faith to the Lord, the only one who is in control of everything. God said it in his word. Then shall you call on me and you shall go and pray to me and I will listen to you. 
God has clearly told us that as long as we genuinely call out to Him in prayer, He will help us even through difficult times. That is why we always say, we ask in prayer, not command in prayer. We ask in prayer because we are talking to the owner of everything so that we use the properties that he owns. It's like borrowing a grinder to a carpenter. We do not say, give me the grinder, right? As if we are commanding to the owner. But instead, we say, can I, can I have or can I borrow this grinder, please? We ask in reverence. Because we are not the owner. And if the owner of the grinder does not allow us to have it, we must not become upset or get angry because we did not get what we asked for. It's not even ours, isn't it? It's His. The same thing is true in prayer. We ask God for something in reverence to God and accept whatever decision or decisions that he make. And we allow, we all know that his decisions are just. Psalms 40 verse 8 says, I delight to do your will, O God. Your law is within my heart. Three, prayer is a tool or a weapon if you may, to our war with the spiritual realm. Just as those who go to war do so with an array of weapons, the same thing is true with Christians. We are at war and we must be equipped. But this war is not visible. It is spiritual. The weapons of the warfare are spiritual as well. And that's prayer. Way back in college, my older sister had an experience about this spiritual warfare. We have a cousin, uh, maybe about uh, six years younger than my sister, who lived with us so that we can help her in her studies. Little that, that we know that in her province, she used to practice different voodoos and witchcrafts together with her friends. And the bad spirit went with her from her province to our little house. And whenever our family is having worship, she is acting very strange. Moving around there from one place to another and feeling uneasy. Our family ignored it because we thought that it's just because she was not used to the worship habit. But as days turns into weeks, we realize that her acting very weird is not a coincidence. We recognize that she is being possessed. One Saturday, as the sun sets, my sister and my cousin were left alone for some reason. In the house, all by themselves, then my cousin started to act weirder than ever. She started speaking like there were three voices inside her, men's voice. Now as a natural response, reaction, my sister was so scared. But the first response that she did was close her eyes and pray. And come to think of it, it's very hard to close eyes in moments like that. Just imagine uh, someone being possessed in front of you. And the first thing you do is close your eyes and pray. But, th but that's what she did. She closed her eyes and prayed and allowed the Holy Spirit to take over. When she opened her eyes, our cousin was just in front of her, staring at her with her very big eyes, making gibberish sounds. 
as if she wants to attack her. She tried holding her, but she was too strong to be contained. So she just stand up and said to her in a calm voice, Come into the light, Rochelle. We are here for you. Then our cousin fainted. When she woke up, the first thing she asked my sister was, I remember my sister still, uh, uh, while he, she's telling me the story, Ate! Ate is a, a way to call an older sister in Filipino language. Ate, where are the two men standing behind you, just in white? I feel like I was in the dark tunnel. But as I follow the small light, the light, it lead me to you and the two men. Where are they now? Where are they now? Not long after that, she was baptized. And so we have to understand that it can only be a powerful tool if we use it often. Like my sister, she's using it often. And, and the Holy Spirit helped her. Now, it's like a power, a, a, a hammer. When a person keeps on using it for the right reason, it becomes a powerful tool for hammering a nail, isn't it? But the first time you will use it, it seems so very heavy. And the, maybe the positioning of our hands is uh, still wrong. We don't know how to position our hands. The way we swing the hammer may, might not be the same way, might not be accurate. And the nails keeps on bending or maybe snapping all the time. And I experienced that one. And it's really very hard. And maybe it takes a long time just to hammer just one nail. But as we keep on doing it, we keep on doing it, we will know which part are we going to hold it? It becomes easier for us. It only takes a while to hammer, a, just to hammer a nail into the target. So similarly, a prayer can also be effective when we use it more often. At first, we may be confused on what to pray and how to pray, but keep on going. Because the more we practice this powerful tool, the more it becomes useful in our lives. Romans 8, verse 26 and 27, it says there, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray, as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings, too deep for words. And he searches, he who searches. Now, in this scripture, we can also see that prayer is the tool and the Holy Spirit is the intercessor. He is the one who intervenes on our behalf. And once the Holy Spirit resides in us, we become his instrument. So again, prayer is our tool. The Holy Spirit that dwells in us is the one who leads us and we are just an instrument of the Holy Spirit. He uses us so that we can be beneficial to others. I will use another carpentry tool to illustrate this example. This is a grinder. A grinder is a tool to remove excess material from a piece of metal. It can also sharpens or smoothens a metal depending on what is its use. It composed of the grinder itself together with the teeth and the cord to plug in to the source. Now the grinder can only be very useful if it is plugged into the source and someone who will manipulate it. Only then it can function properly according to its purpose. Now, the same thing is true in our lives. We are like the grinder. We are the grinder. Without the source, the power source, 
we cannot do anything. And that's why we need God. We ask that the source of power, which is God, will be upon us so that we can move. We can do anything. And we let the Holy Spirit be the one to use us. So He will be the one to use us as, as an instrument in order to perform our purpose. As I end, I would like to invite you to practice praying like how Paul and Silas did. That even though they were imprisoned in Philippi, they were praying and singing hymns to God. And with that, I would like to invite you to join us in our Zoom prayer family every day. That's 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. And we are creating a habit of reading the Bible and communicating with the Lord daily. And that's prayer. I would invite you to come for tomorrow's sharing. It will be the continuation of our topic today, the power of prayer, part two. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for teaching us today about the importance of prayer, about how powerful the prayer is. Lord, we pray that you're going to lead us, that you will be the one to touch us so that we can see the importance of communicating with you. We will see the importance of prayer, that it becomes a way of our life as a Christian. And to see, to, to feel that it is the your presence that allows us to commune with you and we pray lord that uh, whatever we are going to do today you you will be pleased lord lord forgive us if there are times that we disobey you and we went ahead of you and we doubted you change our hearts lord and help us to forgive those who have sinned against us also in jesus name we pray amen amen